Should you buy the iPhone 13 Pro in 2024? The iPhone 13 Pro has been on the market since 2021, and it was one of the best iPhones I feel like ever made. A 6.1 inch, 120 hertz OLED display, triple 12 megapixel 4K 60p camera, A15 Bionic chipset with six gigabytes of RAM, and a 3095 milliamp hour battery housed inside. As the owner of this phone since day one, and yes, I've been shining the sides because who doesn't want to clean up the smudge factor that is the stainless steel iPhone Pros. But in this video, you're gonna know that if this is the phone for you in 2024. Value is subjective for most, but beginning by talking about the price, take a look at the 15 Pro on the left. You're gonna see that a lot of places are actually giving this these iPhone 13 Pros for zero down, so you don't even gotta pay anything to grab one but you know the iphone 13 pro is right around that 450 to 500 dollar mark right now so that's actually half off 50 percent off for a phone that basically does 95 percent of what the iphone 15 pro can do in 2024 so i made a video why you should buy this now like about a year ago but now it's still a great deal especially when you compare it to the 13 pro which if you hold these side by side, these phones feel very similar besides the fact that the 15 Pro is a little bit more polished. But the 13 Pro is definitely a really nice feel still and in some ways actually feels better than this phone. So you're getting a premium iPhone with several years of updates left, like two or three left, and it has a mid-range price point. When it comes to looks, straight from the front, it looks like any other iPhone 13 out there. So it's not really anything much on the front. But this was definitely a pretty much a dream iPhone. Premium build, super smooth display, amazing cameras all around. They nailed every single aspect of this phone. I think this might be the GOAT, uh, like somebody said in the previous video of the Max. The 13 Pro series in general is GOAT. It is going to be some of the greatest of all time. Um, maybe we can get to this era again on the next version of iPhone, but I don't know if it's going to happen yet. But you'll see the triple camera is quite nice here. Um, the stainless steel, I really love the Sierra Blue much more than the Pacific Blue, but that's just my take, and even more than the Titanium Blue. So what do you think about this blue right here? You could see definitely a smooth back, no iPhone logo there, Apple logo there, lightning port, persistently drilled holes at the bottom, and then on the left, the beautiful SIM card tray. We do have ourselves the volume rockers. People are going to see this video in a couple of years and say, what is this guy talking about, that archaic SIM card tray? But for me, I still like SIM card trays. Silent switch. Over here to the right, you do have yourself the power button and the 5G antenna right there. Um, and the way it feels in the hand, man, it's just compact, it's light, it feels pretty darn good. I mean, it's not as light as a newer phone, but it's not super heavy like a Max either. And when it comes to durability, it's actually been found to be more durable than the iPhone 15 Pro. So it's kind of a little bit more of a downgrade to go to a 15 Pro if you're looking for a stronger phone because there's drop tests that prove that the 13 Pro can survive drops more than a 15 Pro. So the newer one's more delicate than this guy right here. So a sturdy piece of gear right here if you decide to pick up the iPhone 13 Pro. I feel confident using this phone without a case. Just put a screen protector on there. You should be good to go. This thing is a tank. It's a little tank of a phone, that's just what it is. And while it's not as light, it's still easy to hold, it's not too hard to use one hand, and the phone itself just kind of slips into the pocket very easily. So if you're looking for a phone that's premium, but not too heavy, but not too light either, but not super huge, it kind of nails it, it really does. Um, for some people, it's still got a little bit too much uh, heft to it, so if you like don't like that, you'll want a base 13 but for those who, who don't care about that, you're going to really enjoy this one. So the display quality is actually very good. It's actually better than, I would say, even, well, I'm not going to say it's better than, but it definitely has a smoother refresh than the latest base model 15, which costs more than this. So you can get a phone with a similar display, smoother display for less money, like a few hundred dollars less. So this is such an excellent deal right now. I just can't not talk about this, at least once this year in this video. So 2024, this is an excellent option uh, for display. One thing about it though is the notch is definitely aging, but you know because Apple doesn't really change up their stuff too much, that notch is really not gonna be you know, a deal breaker for those looking for this second hand. I will say that when you are reading certain things, it tends to get in the way a little bit of the content. 
And also, you know, if you are pinching in the zoom on photos, the notch can be a problem for some people. Yeah, I like about the 13 is it has adequate, you know, enough brightness for most use cases. It's bright enough outdoors, although the 14 Pro did get better. This is still fine. And it didn't really impact battery life too much, the brightness on this phone. It gets really great battery life, even with a really bright display. And even if you have it cranked up quite a bit, it can still make it quite easily. So this 13 Pro really is a really good sweet spot in display quality. It feels like they haven't really done much besides thin out the bezels, which was a last minute decision, and add this, um, I call it the vitamin pill, but it's actually a dynamic island up there. So this is, I'm not going to sit here and kid with you. The 15 Pro, I like the display more because it's just more fresh and polished. But if I wasn't using this, would I care too much? Not really. So the 13 Pro's display, still a really big thumbs up for me. So when it comes to the cameras, what are my thoughts on it right now? Well, my thoughts are, I kind of wish I was still using this phone. I'll tell you why. Because it just does everything I need a camera phone to do. It has the 3X, it has 15 times digital, and it has 4K 60 video. Um, even if you need to use this as a backup camera option, it's an amazing piece of gear to do that. Like if you're trying to do some side B-roll um, pretty good to your main camera, you don't really need to worry about anything else. But if this is your main camera for everything, um, you're not really missing out on much at all. And the best thing about the 13 Pro is that while you can do some of the raw stuff, you definitely get a really good picture regardless of how you take that photo. It really just nails everything and it brought the macro mode. So if you're looking for those close-up shots, it nails that too. Where it's a little bit behind is it doesn't have an action mode, anything like that, but it still does a good job all in all. The front-facing camera is something that is going to be outdated when the next version comes out. There's rumors they're gonna really upgrade the front-facing camera, but the 13 Pro's front-facing camera is still, I would say, very impressive for a smartphone. So it's good all around. It's just not super smart, no AI, really stuff like that. Just really good post-processing, really decent images. It's just a very good triple camera. Everything nails everything without doing anything extra. It's just not extra. It just does everything pretty well. So when it comes to the software, I'm going to spend probably 30 seconds or less on this section. App library, grid of icons, widgets. It's like every other iPhone. It has all the same software. And then if we go into settings here and we scroll down the camera, you do have a couple of differences versus a base iPhone like Pro Raw, Pro Res. Other than that, there is nothing different. iOS is iOS and that's about it. You know, we know what it is, it's polished. Software updates, couple years left to go. Now, if I was to give you my honest take on performance, it's this. In 2024, I like that this still has six gigs of RAM. Reason being is the 14 and 14 Pro had six gigabytes of RAM. So that means this one still has longer, I would say performance, good performance than like a base 13 or 12. So I love that this has six gigs of RAM. It doesn't have the eight like the 15 Pros, but the 15 Pros eight gigs, eight gigs of RAM haven't really changed much in the experience. I also love that it has the A15 Bionic because it's the same chip they use in the base 14. So this has so much life left in it and the performance feels like every other iPhone I use. I love to recommend this in 2024 for performance. It is a beast in this area. ProMotion, everything's smooth, plenty of RAM. It's just like a new phone right now. If you find this new for a really good deal or barely used, you're getting an amazing pick here. So the battery life, while this didn't touch the max, the max is the king, it's still better to me than the 15 Pro and the 14 Pro. So once again, how are we talking about a phone that came out in 2021 and we now have, you know, still better battery life than the latest iPhone. It's probably because the display doesn't get as bright. The A15, I don't know. It's, I don't know why it just gets much better battery life, but it does. It just does that very well. So if you're looking for that, this is the phone. Also, especially in the smaller pros, also the low power mode ekes out even more. Um, so the 13 series nailed the battery life. Even the mini was much better than the 12 mini. So like every 13 model was like pretty darn good in battery. And the 13 pro is no exception. This one, um, I definitely could recommend it here. The lightning port is kind of old and 
you know, definitely not going to be super useful in the future as USB-C continues to expand in Apple's portfolio. But at the same time, you know, it definitely, you probably already have a thousand lightning cables if you're in the Apple ecosystem. If you're not, I do recommend getting something with a USB-C. Um, but if, if this is the one you're looking at, you'll have to invest in a couple of lightning cables. When it comes to the phone call quality, this one is pretty amazing. It has the 5G performance that um, we got with the 12, but they definitely have the same type of reception strength that they improved over Intel. Uh, I found that I really never thought about it with this phone. The 12 was not my favorite. It was definitely much better than the 11, but at the 13, I don't even think about phone call reception quality anymore. I almost don't even need to talk about this section anymore, but I still bring it up because, you know, people need to know what it's like as a phone. The speakers are decently loud. They don't match the current 15 Pro and Pro Max, but they're loud enough. And I do find that even though this has Bluetooth 5.0, it still has some of the older Wi-Fi 6. Everything still connects pretty snappy and um, the speaker quality and the Bluetooth stuff is pretty on point. I don't really have any drop stuff with that. Face ID feels like any face ID since iPhone 10. Um, so that wraps it up with the connectivity and the call section. My final conclusion for this 13 Pro, should you buy it, if you are the type of person who's like, this is in my budget, this is what I want, and I don't want to pay for a 15 Pro or a 14 Pro, this is a really good pick. I think it's um, better for people who are you know, paying cash for them. You're getting a better deal here. If you are just kind of like the type of person who pays monthly on a phone, um, if it's like a $3 difference, why not go with the newer one? But if you're looking to you know, grab an iPhone on the low, but you want a lot of premium features, you want it to feel up to date, and you just want a pro-like device that just feels nice compared to maybe your base model iPhone, this is a really good pickup if your budget is, say, 450 to 500 right now. So if that's you, I definitely recommend it. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or other phones you want to see um, in this 2024 series, drop them down below. Nick here. Be sure to be well. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.